So this metallic casing yes. was also known as the iron lung. The iron lung. Yes, I'm sure you've heard about it. Maybe you've come across the term iron yes. lung. Mm. Yes. And if you haven't, then there it is. Oh yes. But I spent my lifetime doing what everyone said. Paul, you can't do that. I did that. Hey guys, welcome back to the ENB Clinic Show where we discuss matters health in relation to real life experiences. We are your hosts. Beatrice and Esther and today we are going to have a very interesting conversation that Esther is going to talk to us about mm -hmm. and Esther maybe you can just take it away mm -hmm. yes right. thank you so much yes uh, so today's story mm -hmm. I'm going to take you back in time yes. to 1952 in mm -hmm. Texas US. Mm -hmm. uh, there was this young family yes. with a child aged six named Paul Alexander. Paul Alexander. Yes. Mm -hmm. So at that point, the environment was quite dull. There was no much activities going on because the physical gatherings had been banned. Mm -hmm. uh, churches were closed. Yes. So mostly people were indoors. Mm -hmm. Now, Back to this young family with a child, Paul. Yeah. Uh, so it was on July and Paul was just outside the plane in the summer rain, like any average child will be doing. And uh, he started experiencing some headache and some neck pain. Yes. So what he did, he rushed back home to his mom. They yes. told her about, you know, what he was feeling. Mm -hmm. So the mom told him to get inside and get some sleep as yes. she monitored him slowly by slowly. So uh, as she continued with the observation, she noticed that um, there was no much improvement. So she decided to contact the family physician who upon um, observing Paul noted that Paul had contracted the polio virus. The polio virus. So yes. it's like there was an outbreak. There exactly. was a polio outbreak. Exactly. Okay. There was an outbreak. Now the family physician weighed the options and mm -hmm. advised them that instead of going to the hospital, where you know the the hospital was so crowded, so it was uh, Paul had better chances of recovery just mm -hmm. staying at home. And so the mother decided to, you know, let's stick around, let's stay at home, let me observe the symptoms and everything. Within about five days, the situation had gotten worse and it was out of control. Yeah. Paul couldn't hold the crayons anymore. Mm -hmm. Paul wouldn't swallow things comfortably and his breathing was getting shallower by the minute. So she decided to rush him to the hospital so that they could get um, maybe advice from another physician. So they went to the hospital and they got in touch with the physician, the, the resident doctor there, mm -hmm. who upon observation told yes. them, yeah. hey, you know what? Nothing uh -huh. can be done about the situation. Uh -huh. It's too late. Mm -hmm. Nothing can be done. So this was heartbreaking for the mother. You can imagine what she felt being told that, you know, your son can't be treated. That's, you know, we've come to the end of all this. Yes. So she was devastated. She was heartbroken. She was in despair. Mm -hmm. Now she, she just sat um, on the hallway with yes. Paul. Yeah not knowing what to do next mm -hmm. and by chance another physician who was passing by noticed them and immediately recognized that this is an emergency situation that should be attended to mm -hmm. urgently so he quickly grabbed a call and yeah. rushed him to the emergency room where he performed an emergency tracheotomy uh -huh. Tracheotomy. Maybe you can tell us what tracheotomy 
is mm-hmm. tracheotomy. Um, it, it's like it's a a little cut or an incision to the trachea, mm-hmm. the windpipe, mm-hmm. so that you can put in a tube mm-hmm. direct to the lungs. Uh-huh. Because I, I understand, like at this point, yes, the boy was having difficulties breathing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So they needed they needed to do something to aid mm-hmm. in breathing. Ah, nice. For the boy. Ah, well put. Yes. So after the emergency tracheotomy, yeah. Uh, Call was not taken to the recovery room mm-hmm. or ward, whereby he lost consciousness for about three days. And on regaining consciousness, Paul was shocked by what he saw. Paul realized that he was covered in a metallic case from the neck down. Yes. He couldn't move his limbs, mm-hmm. neither could he talk. Mm-hmm. Or swallow anything. Oh, so you can imagine. Just the other day, he was playing out in the rain, and now he is lying there. Yeah. He was shocked. He was in disbelief. And on turning his head left and right, all he could mm-hmm. see were children lying in a similar manner. In these metallic cases. Yes. Wow. So he couldn't comprehend what was going on at that point. Yes. And how old was he? He was six at six that point. Now. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. So for the next eighteen months, Paul experienced a very tough time. Because remember, yeah. this casing is allowing him to to breathe, is assisting him to breathe because it takes over the functionality of a diaphragm. Mm-hmm. So it um when when air is uh, pumped out of the casing, it creates some negative pressure, which allows the the lung volume to increase so that it can gain some air, and that is how he was, you know, being assisted to breathe okay. using this. So it was like a diaphragm. This cylinder. Exactly, uh-huh. it took over the functionality of a diaphragm. Mm-hmm. So remember, Paul couldn't talk. Yes. Now, when you know he he needed um to to be cleaned mm-hmm. remember he's still excreting and everything mm-hmm. so it was a very tough time for him because he was unable to communicate this to the nurses mm-hmm. so at times he would just lie there just drowning in his mucus soaked up in his fecal matter it was a tough like the time. nurses didn't know or the water the water they wanted this boy to communicate to them there was about. an issue going on because uh. it reminds me. Mm-hmm. Sorry to digress. It reminds me of um, th- there are certain uh, conditions mm-hmm. or situations in yeah. hospital mm-hmm. whereby nurses or physicians just give up on the patient mm-hmm. and they start um, they lose they completely lose hope with the with the patient. You know, yeah. coming back to to normal functionality. Mm-hmm. So they just leave them yeah. by themselves yes. and they completely ignore whatever is going on. I don't know whether you've seen that in hospitals. Can you say it? No, don't say. It. Okay. <laughs> mm. Wow. I don't know whether yes, you've seen yes, that. I think I have. Mm. I think I have. Uh, there are some very, very sad situations where we find like nurses or let's say practitioners the people who are supposed to be taking care of these patients okay. where they neglect them. Yeah. And uh, even though a person is terminally ill, mm. I don't think it is very, very good mm-hmm. to really give up on them. Exactly. And, you know, like, just to let them die yeah. without any dignity. Mm. I think it's a, it's a very uh, sad situation. Yeah. It actually happens. Yeah, Even in, uh, in, in various hospitals. Yeah. And it's really sad. It's so bad because end of life care sad. should be done in a in a proper manner. Very dignified mm. manner. Yeah. So that was what was, you know, yeah. going on at that time. Okay. okay. So it was okay. so bad for Paul because mm-hmm. he could even hear the doctors and nurses talking about mm-hmm. um, this patient is going to die. Imagine hearing oh. that. Or he shouldn't even be alive. So sad. So there was so much negativity around him. Yeah. And you know the what amazed me was that about the story is that mm-hmm. Paul took those um negative uh that negative vibe positively. Oh okay. because it gave him mm-hmm. the will 
and the urge to just live and yes. prove them wrong yes. and prove that he can survive this. Wow, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that was um, that period of 18 months. Is, it was so bad. It was, you know, so much uh, going on. Yes. And so one time, uh, a physical therapist contacted Paul's mother. Okay. Yeah, so she contacted Paul's mother. While he was still in hospital. Yeah, he's still in hospital at this point. Mm. So she contacted Paul's mother telling her that, um, hey, I am aware of what is going on and I don't know how I can come into, into play in all this. I don't know how I can help. So Paul's mother went back to Paul, told him about, you know, this, this physical therapist who has contacted me. Would you be willing to, you know, work with her? Mm-hmm. Paul was a bit hesitant at yeah. first because of, you know, the kind of, um, the kind of experience he had had with other, with other healthcare practitioners. Mm-hmm. But eventually he agreed to it. So the physical therapist started yes. coming in to see Paul yeah. every once or twice a week at uh, in, the in the hospital. Yes, and um, within that period, mm. Paul was able to tell this physical therapist what he had been experiencing, what yes. the doctors and nurses had been doing to him, mm-hmm. and there was this instance that he narrated to her, mm-hmm. telling her that um, the healthcare practitioners mm-hmm. were forcing him mm-hmm. to get out of the cage so that he can so that they can force him to breathe without no this mm-hmm. um, diaphragm mm-hmm. so it was bad 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 yeah so Paul described this as he calls this uh, frog breathing mm-hmm. which uh, in medical terms it's known as glossopharyngeal breathing glossopharyngeal breathing yes so what happens you trap air Yes. With your in your mouth cavity and the throat, and you, when you close your mouth, mm-hmm. it seems as if now the air is being pushed, pushed to, to the lungs. Okay. Yeah. So that was the frog breathing. Okay. So the physical therapist um thought of you know why don't I use this mm-hmm. to Paul's advantage? So this is what um she told him. She told him, you know what. How about you yes. try using you try frog breathing mm-hmm. for a whole three minutes, and then guess what? I'll award you with a puppy. So mm-hmm. Paul was excited. Interesting. Paul was excited, yeah. and he tried he tried to achieve this. Mm-hmm. He really practiced it for about a year until he eventually knew how to frog breathe wow. successfully. So she put a watch up here. And we started practicing. But I spent my lifetime doing what everyone said. Paul, you can't do that. I did that. Anyway, so it took a year before I actually got a breath doing that. Okay. Um, that's the way I breathe. Company there. I can't breathe it. I can't breathe it. I can't breathe it. My breathing is a miracle. It's another story. I may be the only person in the world that knows how to do it. And true to the physical therapist's word, yes. he was awarded with a puppy which he named Ginger. It happened, and I got my three minutes in. I got my puppy. Ginger. Yes, Ginger. Yes. So, at that point now, Paul is able to frog breathe, and he didn't stop there. Because he continued this practice on and on, such that he could even go to the yard, he could be taken to the yard, and back into the metallic casing. And from there, I just can't uh, um, um, um. Yeah, don't be the me. Um, um. Let me show you what I can do. Um, um, um. Oh, so you could spend nice. some time away yes. from the cylinder. Yes. And uh, the reason for getting back in the cylinder was mm-hmm. this breathing, this frog breathing can only happen when he's fully conscious. Mm-hmm. He can't do it when he's asleep. So that's mm-hmm. why he still needs the the, the artificial diaphragm, yeah. yes. 
So this metallic casing yes. was also known as the iron lung. The iron lung. Yes, I'm sure you've heard about it. Maybe you've come across the term iron yes. lung. Mm. Yes. And if you haven't, then there it is. Oh, yes. So now, Paul is able to get out of the casing. You uh, know, he's in and out. Yes. So at this point, he decided, mm-hmm. why not further my education? Mm-hmm. Why not prove the health uh, practitioners who are mocking him at that point? Yes. Even, you know, wrong. Wow. So he furthered his education. He completed his high school Good studies. School. Yes. He resumed studies. Elementary. At, mm-hmm, high school. High school. He even graduated from the University of Texas. Wow. Austin. Uh-huh. And uh, still in the iron lung. Still in the iron lung. He's not attending the classes physically. Yeah. So he graduated there with a law degree. Yes. Law, and he became a lawyer. Yes, he became a oh, lawyer. Oh my goodness. And he even practiced. Can you imagine that? Oh. He even practiced. He could wear three piece suits mm-hmm. and even represent clients in a court of law. Wow. Wow. Who could have thought? Nobody, not even me. Yeah. Yeah. So he could use a modified wheelchair, mm-hmm. which could assist him to stay in an upright position. Remember, his body was not paralyzed. You yeah. know what, you know, Polly does. does and we'll body. look into it. Yeah, yes. we'll, we'll get to that. Mm-hmm. So he had a pretty much successful life. Mm-hmm. And possibly, he even, you know, possibly lived better than you and me. Yeah. Something interesting I had yes. was that... He could even, he flew all over the world and he traveled. He even went to church, went to the beach, even went to strip like clubs. Like swimming. I don't know about that part. So he mm. lived, oh. he lived um, quite well. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, and so that goes to show just how much you can make. You know, we can make lemonade when life gives Honestly, us yeah. lemons. True, so so true. Yeah. Now we ask ourselves, what is polio? What does it do to the body? Yes, the polio virus. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So polio is a viral disease. Yes, it is. And if you were, if you've watched um, our episodes, our previous episodes, you've discussed that um, viral diseases they they don't have a cure. But their symptoms can be managed. Yes, true. So the moment um, that virus enters the body and it, you know, does its destruction, mm-hmm. uh, the destruction cannot be reversed. Yes. But it can be managed, you know. So the polio virus <coughs> mainly attacks the nervous system. Yes. And mainly the motor nerves. Yes. So when the motor nerves are affected, it means that... Um, the muscles will be affected. So in the case of Paul, yes. the chest muscles were affected. Yeah. They were infected and, you know, they eventually lost functionality. Mm-hmm. And that is what, you know, made him to be now in the iron lung because mm-hmm. his diaphragm had failed. Yes. And that was the inve- that, that was the invention at that point, the iron lung. Yeah. Yeah. To take up the, the work of a diaphragm, which mm-hmm. is also a muscle. Yes. Of the mm-hmm. breathing system. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, we've come so far, we've come so far with the polio um, disease and so many great strides have been made. So the good thing is that there are these vaccines and yes. even here in Kenya, uh, they're being given out either at birth, you know, when, they, when you have an infant, so the infant is given the vaccines. Mm-hmm. So it's good for parents or guardians to take this initiative mm-hmm. to make sure that their children are vaccinated yes. so that we can completely eradicate polio in the globe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think that this story has really inspired me because when you think about somebody who was totally paralyzed yes. to the level of the respiratory system, it uh-huh. was you know, it was now going dysfunctional and yes. everything. But then he rises up as as uh, disabled as he became, uh-huh. but mm. he decided he decided that he would take his disability mm-hmm. as inability. Yes, and now he became you know like he took up a career mm-hmm. that most of us like you know feel it's quite challenging. Yes, becoming a lawyer. Yes, you know he studied all these things that we hear about, uh-huh. and I think this is really really inspiring to us. Yes, yes, ah, and also yes. it reminds us. Uh, uh, it reminds us the importance of uh-huh. vaccines. Yes. The importance of preventing 
uh, this disease yes. uh, protecting our babies. Uh, so it is a good thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I've learned a lot today. Ah, that's yes. nice. Yes. And maybe if you have questions, please do leave them in the comment section. We'll be glad to answer them. Most definitely. Yes. Uh, so guys, as we always say, mm-hmm. every story told in our own words is meant to educate, empower, and inspire us. Yes. And that's why we always say, our voice is our empowerment. empowerment. Thank you. So guys, if you loved this video, please leave a thumbs up. Mm-hmm. And also you can leave a comment to leave your feedback down there. And Definitely, you can share mm-hmm. and subscribe to our channel if you have not done so yet. Thank you so much, guys, <laughs> for watching. Until next time, bye bye.